welcome to Selector Shenanigans. Um, I'm Michael Madsen. Uh, my Twitter handle handled is there in Madsen87, and then also my GitHub MGM87. Uh, uh, let's jump right in. So we're talking about NGRX selectors, and that the core of NGRX selectors is memoization. Uh, brief explanation of memoization is the same inputs will give you the same output. Um, so a memoized function will cache previous results of the function, um, and then uh, and then return the cached results if the inputs match. Um, in NGRX, the default memoization strategy is a strict equality check. So does this do these inputs equal 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 these inputs? If they don't, it runs the function. If they do, it returns um, the last computed result. So what if that's not enough? Uh, what if a strict quality check isn't what you need? Um, you need to check something more deeply or check the property or something. And then in addition to that, uh, selectors have some more stuff on top of minimalization. Um, so the question is, if the result matches the previous result, what do we do? And we'll get into an example of that in a minute. Well, NGRX can fix that. They built it because they knew that this was going to be an issue. So what I'm going to show you is something that's um, uh, accepted practice. They provide functionality for it, but it's not a super standard thing that you see everywhere. So you'll use it when you need it. So this is what it looks like. Um, you might recognize this looks a little bit like a uh, create selector function that you would use in NGRX, um, but we're using create selector factory. Uh, what this does is it lets us override the default minimalization that happens um, on a selector. So the way it works, uh, if we look here, um, I've circled uh, the projector. Um, when the selector is triggered, it will run the projector function. So you'll see um, at the bottom of this statement that um, it looks a lot like your normal selector. So if you were converting a normal create selector function into a create selector factory, you'd basically put your selector, your old create selector code in parens, and it just gets called after create selector factory. Uh, so that's what the projector is. Uh, we also have the pre-check. So if the pre-check passes, then it will run the projector function. And then there's also the post-check. So if the post-check passes, we will return the values that your projector function computed. Um, to explain those, our pre-check function is what we would call our minimalization function. So this is what NGRX is doing the strict equality check on. Um, so the way it works, you might recognize this. This is sort of like the way like a sorting function works or whatever. You get the two arguments. One is the old value, one is the new value. Um, and you can do whatever check you want in here. Like I said, NGRX is a strict equality check, so it's equal, equal, equal. Um, we had a case for this where, hey, a new object is coming to us but all the properties on the object could be the same. So we're actually being like, okay, is this object the expected object? Check the properties. If there's a mismatch on the properties, we run the function. If there's not a mismatch on the properties, we just return the last computed result. Then we have the post check function. So the post check is a little different because the projector function always runs. So um, the function is going to run and now you have a result. Well, is that result different than the old result? A case for this is if you have a selector that's returning a list of things. So like maybe you're filtering down an entity into a few selected entities. Uh, well, that list, every time it's returned, even if they are the same values in the list, it's a separate list, which means you're gonna trigger, trigger change detection and such. So to avoid that, um, you can use the post check and, um, and maybe you check the IDs of the values in the list or something like that. Anyway, it works similarly. If you return true, it'll just return the old result. If you return false, it'll return your new result. So that way you can control your change detection. <laughs> and uh, that's about how it works. Um, there's not very good documentation for this on, NG on the NGRX site. Um, so you really got to dig to find out how it works. I will be writing an article about this so you can have like in front of you how this all works. But 
it's pretty simple. You just use that uh, trace selection function and you're off, you're ready to go. So.